Hi, it's Matthew McAllister here and welcome to another tutorial video. Uh, again, I'm at Seacast Guitars in Karlsruhe in Germany. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about finger independence and show you a couple of exercises, just very simply, um, which test your own level of finger independence. So these exercises are not so much about slaving away for hours, um, working on building up a lot of strength or dexterity. They're just simple exercises for you to check, well, how are my fingers doing? Are they actually getting more independence as I, I play the guitar and as I, I improve? Um, you'll be quite surprised, I think, by um, the result of these exercises. They're very simple, but they just show you how much resistance your fingers have when they try and separate from each other or move away. So what we do um, is we take our, our first finger and um, I'm going to put it today at the seventh fret of the top E string. So I'm going to put it on fret seven, finger one, which puts me in seventh position. So my second, third and fourth fingers can all line up if needs be on fret eight, nine and 10. So I'm in seventh position. Now I'm going to literally put my first finger on that fret and then I'm going to practice moving my second finger away from that first finger but down to the bass strings of the guitar. So basically moving all the way from the top E string down to the bass. And then I'm going to reverse and put the first finger on the low E string at fret seven. And then I'm going to move the second finger away towards the top of the guitar. So basically we've moved from having a fixed finger on the seventh fret, either at the top of the guitar or at the bottom. And then we've started to move the finger away. And what I want to do is to play that first note and try and sustain it, try and keep it ringing on. So for example, if I play that B, and then move away from it, and then I play again. And by the time I reach the top, I should still have that note ringing. So if you hear that, I play the lowest note, and then I'm moving away but I'm still sustaining that bottom pitch. The same with the top note. And here I'm actually showing the stretch between the index and the middle finger. So it's not so much about a big stretch in this direction, sort of fanning the fingers out. It's actually about if I'm moving across the guitar, how much independence do I have in this direction? And what you might find when you try this is by here, you start to turn the elbow or turn the hand. Or your fingers start to tighten up. The second finger doesn't want to stretch away from the first. The same as you go up. You might start to turn a little bit. So when you practice it, you're really sort of testing, well, how independent is the movement of my finger? How relaxed is it? And then the first and second finger should be okay. So then you want to try your next set of fingers. So if I try the second finger, and now I'm moving the third away. And then this direction. So a little bit more resistance between the second and third fingers. I can feel that the third doesn't want to separate as much. So play at the top. Sustaining, and then all the way down. Play at the bottom, sustain, and move all the way up to the top. Okay, so again, the stretch is here. It's between the second and the third fingers. Then if I take that to its natural conclusion, it's the third and the fourth fingers. So the third. Now here, I can really feel the stretch between four and three. And that's just because the fourth and the third fingers, there's a really big difference in height between the fourth and the three. You know, some people have a, a longer fourth finger, but for example, most people will probably be like me, there's quite a distance in height between the third and the fourth finger. So when I actually do this exercise, I'm trying to really let that fourth finger stretch out. If I do it from the bottom, there, I can really feel that stretch, okay, so. Now, if you're getting a lot of tightness, if you're getting a lot of rotation of the arm, then it means that already, even with that simple exercise, you can see that the fingers aren't really uh, capable of enough independent movement, independent control. So if I put the, all of the exercises together. OK, 
okay? You've worked on every single group of finger ascending up from the seventh fret. You can, of course, do that in different directions. You could start with the fourth finger. This is a little harder, this one. And then start with the third. And then start with the second. And sometimes I like to just go up and down while sustaining the one pitch. That would be... That's probably going to be the most difficult one for you, the third and fourth finger, with the fourth finger fixed on the low E string and the third moving across. So, just a series of finger independence exercises, but really just very simply put so that you can test your own level of finger independence. So when I would suggest practicing these finger independence exercises is when you're doing your normal technical warm-up or your, or your little technical routine, um, they'll always feel a little bit sluggish in the morning, but for sure the, the more you do them, the more comfortable and the more fluent they'll get and the finger will have confidence as it separates from another one, from another fixed finger. Um, if you do them every time you warm up and every time you're sort of practicing, they don't have to do them for long. You can do them for just, you know, two or three minutes, four or five minutes. You start to find that they really help you when you come to a moment in a piece where you have a fixed finger and the other fingers have to move against. A little example of that, just so you can see it practically in, in play, would be, for example, at the beginning of a studious where we have first finger often fixed on E, or B. So if I just play the opening. And it continues like this, but often there you can see I had the first finger fixed on the seventh fret or the first finger fixed on the B string seventh fret. So between the A, sorry, and E string. With that one being fixed, the independence of three and four is really tested. They have to move quickly and they have to release and put down quickly. So something like... Back and forward with these exercises is really testing how much independence and control those fingers can have. So you'll find that very quickly this exercise actually sort of improves many of the pieces that you're already working on and you'll find that actually you get good results with that independent control and you can test your finger independence and every time you do it you should feel that your fingers are getting more confident, more comfortable and a little bit stronger. So good luck with that. Um, don't maybe do it you know when you're trying to impress your friends because it's really quite boring and sitting there for hours <laughs> is maybe not quite you know the coolest thing to be doing. Um, maybe when your friends come round you can play them. Though. It's much more fun then. But you know, hours of that every day, maybe a little bit too much, just maybe five or ten minutes. So, good luck with that for now. Bye.